Well, hello. In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to be looking at mixing three color palettes. The first one is going to be a triad, the second a tetrad, and the third will be your choice. Now let's look at what options we have here and what these terms mean. Triad, a group of three used equidistant on the color wheel. So that means they have to have an equidistant relationship. It can't be any three colors that we want. They need to have an equidistant relationship. For example, the primary use of red, blue, and yellow on the traditional color wheel would be a triad color relationship. And notice that the U's are equidistant. They're in an equilateral triangular relationship, and there are three colors between each one. Regardless of what uh, color system we use, uh, it could be the secondary colors from the additive color wheel, for example, as long as they're equidistant, or it could be intermediate colors uh, from the, the subtractive color wheel. Regardless of what color palette uh, we choose, the U's must be equidistant. Okay, so that covers triad. Now let's look at tetrad. Tetrad are essentially two sets of complementary colors, so let's look at complement first. Two U's opposite each other on the color wheel. So beginning with the um, traditional color wheel, if we choose red and green, these U's are complements. That means these two colors tend to complement each other very well. The vibration of wavelengths uh, when striking the human eye tends to produce a real visual vibration, so it, it kind of excites the cones in the, in the eye, the uh, receptors, the nerve receptors, and these colors are often used together, say, in order to produce really dramatic uh, visual results. So uh, any colors, for example, violet and yellow, any colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel, magenta and green, are complementary colors. Now, we have to be careful not to draw a line that is slightly at an angle because that would not be a complementary pair. That would be close but no cigar. So we gotta make sure that the colors are directly across from each other to make a complement. Now a tetrad is essentially two sets of complementary colors. For example, let's go back to the traditional color wheel. Red and green, yellow and violet would make a tetrad color palette for equidistant use. So there's one color between each one of these on the other side. So two sets of complements. We could also, for example, choose um, magenta and green and cyan and red, or we could choose orange and cyan blue. So whatever use we choose, they need to be equidistant. People can often uh, you, you know, uh, use this kind of marking, uh, you know, the square or rectangular marking to identify the color. So whatever uh, you know, way you choose to do it, the colors must be equidistant on the color wheel. All right, now let's go to monochrome. Monochrome just means one U, any one U, red, blue, violet, magenta, cyan, blue, whatever color, cyan, green, whatever color you choose, making sure that this color in the HSB mode is not going to vary from 150. In other words, it should be tints, tones, and shades of that one U and nothing else. Uh, if it's pushing, it, you know, if the numbers are changing here, the color is changing, it's no longer monochrome, so a single color. Analogous are colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. For example, green, cyan, green, and cyan. These three colors share properties, or green and yellow green. These colors share properties, so whatever colors we choose, they must share some properties. So if we take a, a primary color like red and the secondary color magenta, the color in between is going to have similarities. Uh, red, orange, orange, and yellow, orange, these hues have similarities, so they share properties. Two or three colors next to each other, and that's as far as it goes. If it's going too far, if it's going to the next hue, for example, it, you know, the fourth hue, it, it's no longer sharing properties. Okay, we've covered complement. Split complement essentially is to choose a color. So let's choose a color and um, uh, say, let, say let's choose yellow. The split complement of yellow from the additive color wheel would be violet and cyan blue because these are the two colors on either side of its complement. So split the complement, split the difference. Now, 
the color combination from the traditional color wheel uh, of yellow, if we chose yellow, would not be violet, but it would be red violet and blue violet. So it depends on which color wheel we're quoting, making sure you stick with one color wheel for making your color selections on any particular assignment. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is to start mixing our colors. So I think I'm going to start with let me start with, oh, the primary colors of the subtractive color wheel. I'm going to add that in the square. So magenta for the second one. And yellow is going to be the one I use for the third. So, okay. All right, so the next thing I want to do is make uh, my color choices. So I'm thinking ahead because I'm going to use my color palettes, one of them, whichever one I ultimately uh, favor the most for my design. That's going to be at the end of the week uh, for assignment three. So I'm going to use my magenta, or I'm sorry, my cyan color. I'm going to make some tints of this color. Let's go a little bit further. Okay, and And I want to make a really light one here. Okay, so now I have four hues. And I think that I'm going to change this one a little bit. I want that just to be a wee bit lighter. So what we can do is uh, have a, a row of tints, for example. And then for the second row, I think I'm going to do just shades for the second. I could do tones, but in this case, I think I'm going to do some shades because I'm going to use this to develop some uh, depth in my design because cool colors tend to recede. And I'm getting some nice uh, transitions here, and I can go to a very, very dark hue and have some deep accent hue. So now I have a nice range of cyan for magenta. It's a nice um, color for a tone. It makes mixes up nicely for a tone. So here we're going to make a few tones here. Giving myself, well, let's see, I want a little bit more contrast. So. Maybe I'm going to make that one a little bit more vivid, but a little bit darker. And this one also making this one a little bit darker so that I have some accent, contrast accent use. Okay, the next thing I want to do is yellow, and it's a nice bright color that will make some, you know, give me some nice accents as well. So I'm going to make my uh, colors uh, tints of yellow, and I want enough color in there so that it's really visible as a bright color. Yellow advances, warm colors advance. Okay, now I have my triad palette done. The next thing I'm going to do is my tetrad palette. So let's, let's I'm going to switch. Let's go to the traditional color wheel. I'm going to use violet for my first hue. Yellow for my second. And you could line them up at the top or you know however you would like to do it there's lots of ways to do it um, but I'm gonna people tend to read left to right uh, just from training so I'm gonna do it that way okay my next color will be um, let's see oh let me choose uh, blue and orange so I'll choose blue and orange Okay, so the next thing I want to do is tints, tones, and shades of these hues. Okay, now orange might make a nice rich uh, color because it goes to brown quite nicely. So I'm going to make some richer brown hues with this tone. Okay, this hue. Uh, warm tends to advance, cool tends to recede. Uh, so let me make some uh, tones of blue. I don't want it to be too light. I want to use some kind of to produce a sense of depth. And I want to maybe a little bit of a neutral, slightly neutralize the U a little bit. No, that's not quite neutral enough. It doesn't have enough of a change. So let's make it a little bit. Okay, there we go. Getting a little bit more dramatic in there. And you know, I can make them, I can make them softer gray as well, right? Where I add more white to the mix while I'm reducing the black so that, you know, I'm not getting necessarily a, a, a dramatic range in value, but I'm getting 
uh, a dramatic range in grayness. I could even you know, make them lighter gray if I wanted to, right? So now I have a range of, of use for blue. I can add, ooh, and maybe I'll make that one just a little bit lighter as well so that I have um, you know, a, a, a nice transition there. Okay, I'm looking for smooth transitions. For yellow, that's also a warm color. And you know, yellow, when you you know make make it uh, into a, a shade, gets kind of dark, kind of uh, olive green. So I think I'm going to use this as a bright you, like I did here, and just a couple of colors for that row, for that row, and then for my final you, uh, I'm going to. Add tones as well, or maybe I'll make a tone and then a couple of shades just to give myself a little bit more of a visual drama. Okay, so now I have a color palette. Okay, and for my third palette, I think I'm going to choose analogous hues. Let's see, uh, let's go for magenta. Magenta red. And red. And I'm going to use red for my last two rows. So again, uh, what I want to do is produce some tones of red. Myself some kind of terracotta colors here. And oh, I've only got one. Oh, the last two, I think I'll make that one a little bit lighter, richer in saturation maybe. But yeah, let's do that. Okay. No, no, no. I want it to be lighter even than that. Okay. And then for my last one also, I want it to be a little bit lighter. And for the, the next row, so that way I've got some neutral reds there to work with. But for the final row here, I'm actually going to use shades because I can get some real rich dramatic hues for shades of red. Again, they have a nice, almost rich reddish brown hue. Okay, so now I have that for uh, same thing with uh, magenta. I can make some tones of magenta. Just a little bit of modification there. Oh, that's not dark enough. I want to produce transition, so there we go. And I'm a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more neutral. So I have a nice range of tone for, to, for producing depth, and I do the same thing. So I just want tints for uh, this one. I get a nice bit of accent color here, and I'm done. The next thing we want to do is to actually mark uh, our color palette. So say I'm going to, uh, I'll start with my color palette one. I'm going to mark my uh, three U's that I have selected and I have to copy and paste that. Now before I copy and paste it, I'm going to need to add some uh, some artboard or canvas to the design. So I've already marked it and I'm going to select my uh, palette. I want to make sure I don't select the text because by now we should know that a subtractive color wheel, we should recognize it by the placement of the primary colors. Command copy. Now what I'm going to do is go here, image, canvas size, and I'm going to add a few pixels because inches is too big. I'm just going to add 100, give me some on the top, on the bottom, and Command V because I already copied it. And Command or Alt T brings up the transform tool. I can hold my shift key down to reduce the size, move it into place, and select apply. And now I have my triad palette marked with a color wheel. Then I want to add a text box, type in triad. I can eliminate that, I can paint it out or whatever I wanted to do. And then I have to add some words that relate to this palette uh, for myself. Whatever I feel uh, describes these, each one of these palettes, I add some, some text to describe it. So I would repeat the process, marking my tetrad use and copy and paste my color wheel. Uh, mark my analogous use, copy and paste my color wheel. And then after writing my text, sign my name, and I'm done. Let me know if you have any questions.